Welcome to Sports Spectrum, the sports and faith podcast that brings Jesus back into the conversation. Here's your host, Jason Romano. Welcome everyone to the Sports Spectrum podcast. I am Jason Romano. It is great to have you here joining us on the program today. As always, we want to steer you towards sportspectrum.com, our website, bookmark it, make it a place to go every single day. We have daily devotionals at 6 a.m. each morning. We also have articles all day long on the intersection of sports and faith, faith, spanning the spectrum of sports, if you will, and check them out. There's really lots of content there. Articles that go all the way back, lots of archival content, great stories on sports and faith, and also our magazine that's been around for over 30 years is the pillar of this ministry at Sports Spectrum, this media ministry. The magazine is still going strong, a quarterly magazine, the best deal around, just $18 for an entire year, 18 bucks, that's all. Get you a quarterly subscription to our Sports Spectrum magazine, plus a couple bonus issues. It's really a great magazine to use as a tool to hand to others and tell them about Jesus through the intersection of sports. Check it out. Subscribe and check out the Sports Spectrum magazine over at sportspectrum.com. Today in the podcast, we welcome Nick Mingione. He is the Kentucky baseball head coach. We welcome Coach Nick to the program. He is the 2017 SEC Coach of the Year and the 2017 National Coach of the Year. And the really cool thing about that was that was his first year ever being a head coach on any level in baseball, on any level. Before that, he was Mississippi State's assistant baseball coach from 2009 to 2016 and got his start with Kentucky back in 2006-2007 as the assistant baseball coach there. That 2017 year was kind of a dream for Kentucky baseball and for Coach Nick. The program made a trip to the NCAA Tournament Super Regionals for the first time and finished ranked in the top 10 of every major college baseball poll. And that success has carried over to the Major League Draft, where Mingione and his staff's ability to groom players for a professional career has led to 21 guys being selected in the past two MLB drafts, the most of any program in the nation. The 13 Cats, the 13 Kentucky Wildcat players taken in 2018 was ranked as the most in the nation. So the guy can recruit and the guy can develop players. He's also a very outspoken man of faith. And I love diving deeper into Coach's philosophy on not only faith, but on coaching and just how he balances it all. Really good stuff here. And I'm just grateful to have Nick Mingione, the Kentucky baseball head coach here on the Sports Spectrum Podcast. Take a listen. Coach Mingione, welcome to the program. Oh, thank you for having me. appreciate what you guys are doing and all you stand for. I appreciate that, Coach. Thanks so much for being here. And we're taping this in mid-April, basically, the season in full force. And certainly highs and lows come with being in sports. Why don't, you, why don't we start with this? How can you take us through a week? Maybe it's this week or last week. And what a week looks like for you as the coach at Kentucky as far as preparation, game planning, practices, and even the games themselves. How much time do we have? <laughs> <laughs> How about the Cliff Notes version? <laughs> oh, my goodness. Oh, my goodness. Where to start, right? So, yeah. you know, Monday mornings, we just got done playing a weekend series. And Monday mornings, we meet with the staff, and we do what we call an after-action review. And we just basically go over everything that happened from the weekend, maybe personnel choices. We go over our pitching. We go over players individually. And then uh, we try to create a game plan for them moving forward and what this the next week looks like. So obviously, player development is really important. And um, in our program, we talk all the time about developing them as a student, a person, and a player. And you know, in, on Monday mornings, we're spending a lot of time on how we can develop them as players. And then what you know, what pile of theirs are they doing good? And how do we keep making that better? And then where do they maybe need some work? And then we also come up with maybe themes for the week. We mm. come up with themes that we need, maybe that our team might need moving forward. Maybe some ideas. Sometimes they're catch words, you know, that we use. Sometimes they're phrases and slogans and things like that to try to get them in the right place mentally. Because I think we all know how important it is to have our student athletes in the right spot mentally. And then, you know, obviously, you know, yesterday being an off day, and then t- today, Tuesday, we have practice. So. 
we'll get together and just go over a, a quick idea and I, I share some ideas about practice and how we need to train them better, you know, after what we talked about the day before and we slept on or prayed over or whatever, and then how do we train them? And then we get on the bus tomorrow and we head down to Nashville and play a game in Nashville. And Thursday we drive down to Oxford, Mississippi and have another practice and we have a weekend series against Ole Miss. So hmm. um, busy, lots of time together, lots of planning and preparation, but obviously this is, you know, where God has gotten us and this is our platform and we're rolling with it. What's one of the themes, maybe it was this week's theme, last week's theme, but kind of some of the themes or words that you've seen, uh, you know, giving to the team throughout this season that's uh, really stuck or helped with, uh, with, with them either on the field or even as people, like you said. Yeah. So, you know, we had one weekend where we ended up getting swept and, you know, we asked our players to respond. And we basically talk to them about how, look, there's times in life you're going to get knocked down. And, look, we want to win, and we would, would have loved to, to sweep our opponent and all that. But, look, now we have an opportunity. And that word opportunity is big. And we presented them with this idea of, hey, look, look, we got an opportunity to respond. And, you know, maybe even shared a quote with them about you learn a lot about somebody by the way they act when things don't go their way. <laughs> and our team and our baseball program had an opportunity to respond. And then we created a game plan forward, moving forward. I think it's really important to teach our student athletes, like, hey, look, we're asking you to respond, but then here's how we're going to do it. And um, so that, that would be one example of maybe something we'd use to try to teach our young men. How do you stay poured into yourself as a coach in your faith? Because you're pouring into these guys every day, right? Especially now when you're in the middle of the season and you're just in it. How do you stay fed? How do you stay grounded in your faith? And we'll talk about your testimony in a minute, but just right now, how does how does that look? What kind of rhythms do you have in your life? Yeah, so just routine. And I think anytime, I don't know, you know, about you or any of our listeners, but yeah. I, I typically do good with a routine. And, you know, anytime I get off that routine, sometimes it will you know, throw me off, right? And, you know, I, I talk about whether it be with recruits or with our team about the importance of, how important, you know, my faith is and each morning. So for example, this morning I was up early and I read and spent one-on-one -on -one time in God's word and, and then, you know, spent a ton of time in prayer. God has really been teaching me about the importance of just prayer and even sometimes just sitting and listening, you know, that's, um, that's hard for me to do to sit still. Anybody that knows me, look, I'm all over the place, right? <laughs> but just to be able to just be still and quiet, is just so important and so this morning for example i'll just use today just got up early and read and spent time in god's word and then like i said spent time in prayer and um and then obviously you know you know one thing that god's been teaching me i hope i can teach somebody is, is the importance coach madison is the former head coach here at kentucky and he meets with us every tuesday morning matter of fact and hmm. we just got done doing a bible study but he said to me our first year here and he said it was our first year and he said nick you want to know how i can i can guarantee you'll have a successful season this year do you want to know how and look i, I jumped up i'm like what <laughs> like i'm on the edge of my seat now i'm like you're guaranteeing that i'll guarantee it he's like well, i need you to do three things he's like i need you to pray for your coaches pray for your players and play pray for your players parents mm. And, uh, man, I just – I had to share that when you asked me about routine. So that's what I did this morning. And it's just something powerful about even praying for your players, especially the ones that are just bothering you and getting underneath your skin, right? Like, yeah. Right? Like there's something to be said for being still and quiet and then just to say their name out loud and just pray for them. You, I show up to practice and I just view that player totally, totally different. And um, that was a really, really long answer to a really short question. So <laughs> no, it's a podcast. It's fine. But I think something you said, Coach, which was great, uh, was success. Uh, you know, he said you want to have a successful season. Well, success in the eyes of a believer, I think, is different than we're not talking about wins and losses here. Of course, wins and losses are great. And, you know, a super regional tournament two years ago and coach of the year is awesome and all these sort of accolades. But success in the eyes of the Lord is a little different, right? Tell me what that looks like for you. Yeah, and you know what? That's right. You know, that's amazing. The fact that you even say that. I mean, here we are. We do something that's never been done before that first year. And we go to a super regional and we're two wins from Omaha. And 
you're right. I was named the SEC and the National Coach of the Year. Yeah. And I tell everyone, like, you know, I had never been a head coach before at any level. Mm. Like, never a T-ball or a Little League head coach. Like, how's that possible? <laughs> right? Like, God is going to, like, right? Like, Mitch Barnhart, R.I.D., is going to hire a guy that's never been a head coach at any level. Then all of a sudden, in his first year, they're, he's going to be named the SEC coach of the year and the National Coach of the Year by one publication. Like, that's, awesome. that's only because of the grace of God. Like, you can't make that up. But more importantly, you talk about success. I mean, we had we had a player give his life to the Lord that fall. Yeah. Right. Like to me, that's now we're go okay. Now we're getting into something. Right. Like yes. don't get me wrong. I want to win a championship as much, if not more, than the next guy. Right. Like, but whew, man, that was a successful season in so many ways. And how do you balance that, Coach? How do you? Because you work at a, at a university, which obviously is. And as believers, we're called to love everyone and we're not called to um, to judge anybody or throw Bibles in people's faces. So tell me how you kind of work through that as a believer. You're not shy about your faith, certainly, or you wouldn't be doing this podcast. But at the same time, you got a job to do. And tell me about that balance and that tension, because I think a lot of our listeners who work, certainly work in the secular world at a regular job every day, have that struggle and have that sort of tension with them when they go into their job about living out their faith. Yeah, one thing I'll never do is force it on anybody. I, I don't ever I don't ever do that. I would just hope that, you know, and this is one of my prayers is that when they see me, that they see the light of Christ. Like that would be my prayer. That was my prayer this morning in our coach's Bible study. But it's just that they would see that and they would say, Man, there's something different about that guy. Mm. What is it? And then ultimately it would be the Lord and that would be the difference. So, but I will never force it on anyone or yeah. anything like that. I just, I think it's really important. And look, I fail every day. You know, I just, man, I'm just like, man, did I do that? Man, I shouldn't have done that. I shouldn't have said that. Right. It's just to understand, but that's why we need Jesus, right? Is we're not perfect and it's not okay to keep making the same mistakes over and over. But at the same time, it's like, man, I would hope that they would see the light of Christ in me. You're known as one of the the best recruiters in the game, and the best uh, one of the best player guys at developing players in college base, baseball. What have you found in many ways is the greatest component to being a great recruiter? How how has that for you been something that you've seen success in? There's that word again, right? And being able to recruit really great guys. What do you think is the key component there? Well, you know what? When I'm at my best in recruiting, you know. I, a guy by the name of Aaron Hogue who meets with me and he's discipled me at times. And, you know, he's just shared with me. He shared a thing with me one time. And he talked about transitional prayers, about how important they are. Mm. And, you know, there was a time, especially when I was the recruiting coordinator, where I remember before I got out of my car, I would just pray. And I would just ask the Lord for wisdom and guidance and discernment and I just had to remind myself that like, hey, in this recruiting process, we're trying to build the Lord's team, Lord. I'm not trying to build my team. I want to build your team. And then you show me who you want. And that's still my prayer today. It's like, I want to build God's team. And I want us to get who he wants us to get. And there's a reason why we're going to get these players. We're not getting them. There's, it's not by accident. There's a reason why. And I truly believe that. And you know what? There's times where it's not like right now, we're, we're not going as good. We're just not. Our team's not playing as good or whatever. But, you know, like I prayed with our team on Sunday, it's just like, hey, they're here for a reason, and we're all here for a reason. And you know what? I, I believe in that, that we're trying to build God's team. But also I just believe in just brutal honesty. I think yeah. that's really important that when a recruit sits down, they just say, man, you know what? Coach manager, Nick, whatever they call me, just go, man, that guy's really genuine, and he's real. And they can walk out of here, and they can have the peace knowing that. It's like, hey, look. So I just believe in brutal honesty and I just believe in being really genuine with them. And you know what? There's recruits that come and this isn't the place for them. And there's, you know, and there's recruits that do come and they're like, no, this is the place. But I think it's most important. We want to build God's team. But yeah. uh, being brutally honest and genuine is something that's really important. Kentucky baseball head coach Nick Mingione is here on the Sports Spectrum podcast or at your Twitter page, and I'll give it a little plug, at Coach underscore Mingione. It says you first and foremost foremost are a Christian, and we've talked about your faith, obviously, so much so far. But let's talk about where that began. Tell us your testimony. Maybe give us a snapshot of faith growing up and when it was the moment when you were able to kind of go deeper in a relationship with the Lord. Yeah, you know what? There was a 
part in my life where it was more about religion than relationship, and I didn't understand that yeah. until my. This is amazing, and I, you know, my freshman year in college, we I went to Embry Riddle Aeronautical University in Daytona Beach, Florida, and my coaches were Greg and Todd Williams, and um, I've always wanted to coach since I was five years old. I could just, you know, I've always loved baseball, but you know, but when I was 12 years old, I had a coach empower me. He was the guy that basically said to me, Hey, Nick, I need you to get our team engaged. Hmm. I need you to get them to pay attention. They're being real quiet or whatever. And then all of a sudden it's like, I was, yes, look, I was that annoying guy. It was like, Hey, how about this? There's two outs. You got it, two outs. You know, Hey, come on now, pay attention. Talk to the pitcher. You know? And then like, we had this team full of people. Like, hey, blah, blah, blah. you know, like I was that annoying guy that made <laughs> his teammates do that. But my coach empowered me. Yeah. It's like, he gave me the reins. Like, Nick, I want you to get them engaged. And, I just loved it, and I've always wanted to coach, so you know what? I went to an aeronautical university, and I got an interdis- interdisciplinary degree. I got a degree in aerospace studies, and it's just like, why would somebody you know, that wants to be a coach go to Embry-Riddle, right? It was like the Lord worked this out in my freshman year. This is amazing now. Hmm. Yep. My freshman year, one of my sweet mates, we had to deal where three guys lived on one side and three guys lived on the other. We had the little connecting room in the back, but one of my teammates, his name was Brian Carter, he said, Nick. He's like, do you want to go to church with me? And he did. He invited me. And I went to Daytona Beach First Baptist. And, you know, they, I heard the sermon and did everything else. And when it came time for the invitation, it was like the Lord was just tugging in my heart. And it was like, you know, if, you know, I was missing something. And I'll never forget, like, I, I was in tears. And my buddy Brian's like, come on, you want to go down? You know, and I, I went down. But it was a college teammate that night. I gave my profession of faith and it was because of a college teammate and he invited me to church and God did the rest. And as you know, it's like, man, when you live your life in sin, it's been a maturation process, right? It's yeah. just, whew, man, it's just, I didn't change overnight. And there was times where I was still making bad decisions and doing all that, but um, thank God I'm not where I used to be. <laughs> right. Yeah. But um, yeah, it was, a, it was a college teammate. And um, that's when I realized like I can have a personal relationship with the Lord and, that's what um, is just amazing now. Like, that's just an amazing thought to me that we can have a relationship with the creator of the universe. Like, man, we can, like, that's unbelievable. But it started with a, a college teammate and then God did the rest. Tell me about what you learned from that as you've gotten older and gotten more seasoned in your faith and now a head coach for the first time. I can't believe the first time ever that you've been a head coach. Like, that's just mind boggling to me that you never were a coach like in high school or a head coach or, you know, the, the main guy in a T-ball team. <laughs> That's amazing to me. But I'm just curious as you've seasoned in your faith, what that looks like in terms of seeing guys, you mentioned one of your players coming to the Lord earlier and, and seeing the seeds being planted, I guess, as opposed to forcing your faith and how Simple it can be simply to invite someone and then letting God do the rest. Tell me how you've seen that evolve over the years. Yeah, it's been really amazing and um, to watch God and just to have faith and trust in him and just to watch and just, you know what, I don't know and I hope you appreciate my brutal honesty here, but you yeah. know what, I, I'm the type of person that sometimes it's like, man, it's really nice to see answered prayers. Sure. And you know, in our time here, I think we've seen seven people come to know the Lord and that's what the three and a half years we've been here. And it's just like, man, God just keeps showing us like, Hey, this is right, Nick, this is where you're supposed to be. And this is what's, you know, obviously supposed to be happening. And, um, but until I got personally closer with the Lord and truly like dove in and started memorizing scripture and just understanding God's word at its deepest you know, level, I still have so much work to do and I don't understand. And it's like, but at the same time, it's like, th that is when I became more confident at maybe even understanding the gospel or even presenting it, you know, the gospel to anyone. And you know what, I just think that over time, God has just really taught me and he's really shown me and he's giving me certain Bible verses and yeah. things of that nature to where it's like, man, I, I, I do, I, I, I'm starting to understand better and I still have a lot of work to do, of course, but um, still growing. For almost every coach that I've spoken with, I just got back from the final four and spoke with a lot of coaches there. There is a tension that exists with being all in for God 
all in for work and all in with your family. I know you have a family, a wife, and a young. Uh, I, I think you have one child, right? Am I right on that, or do you have? Multiple yeah, children? right. He's four years old. Yeah, yeah. a little four-year-old. So that's great, and that's a great age. But how do you manage those demands that come from coaching and balance them not only with your faith but with your family and trying to stay all in for all the different areas that you're you're touching right now? Yeah, you know what? I'll never forget this. I'm so happy you brought that up because if this could bless a coach or anybody that's listening, um, when Kristen and I, my lovely wife, we went through marriage counseling and Scott Kappelman did it down in Starkville, Mississippi, and I'll never forget this. He said to me, Nick, when you and Kristen take your hands that day and you guys finish that ceremony and you become married and unified as one, she is the most important person in your life mm. at that time. It's no longer your parents. It's when you have kids, it's not going to be your kids, you know, and he presented the scriptures and everything else, but he's like, this is the one, like, that's the most important thing to you. And, you know, that would be the most important person to you. And I was like, wow, like, <laughs> you know, I didn't even know this was in God's word, right? <laughs> like, yeah. And then, so just how important it's been to, you know, number one, to have my relationship with the Lord right. And then with my wife. So something that Kristen and I do is every week we go on a date. And it doesn't matter what our schedule is. It doesn't matter. I'll put off whatever. So last night, for example, we went on a date and we spent one-on-one -on -one time together. And I just think that's just so important because when I have my relationship with her right, then it's just like, man, my relationship with our son is better and my relationship with our team and coaches and everything else is better. Right. But it starts with the Lord. Number one, I'll make no mistake about that, but I just think how important that is. And then, you know what, yesterday I had an opportunity my son, he got out of school at 1130 and I was in a meeting with some of our coaches and I just said, Hey guys, I got to go. I'm going to go pick up my son. Mm. And I had to make a decision at that moment that I was not going to finish that meeting and I was going to go pick up my son. And he came to the office and I re recorded my radio show and right there. And he sat there and ate his lunch while we did that. And then we went downstairs and he, he loves baseball. I wish he loved golf, but, uh, <laughs> he, uh, well, he's four, give yeah. him some time. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Not that I golf, I've golfed one time in eight years, but, um, I just, you know, so we went down and we played in the batting cage. And then last night when I got done at the office, I took him outside of the back and we went fishing and caught some crappie off our dock and try to spend time with him before Chris and I went on a date. But time, I had someone tell me one time, time is one of the most precious gifts you can give someone because you can never get it back. Mm. And that's what I don't want to miss out on my time with my wife um, and time with my son. So I just carve out time every week to go on a date with my wife. And to spend a one on one time with my son. And you know what? I had a coach one time say it's like when you're a coach, you got to be really good with your kids in the morning and at night. So this morning I, I woke him up and I lay in his bed and I snuggled with him. And then we read a book um, about our mascot. He wanted to read a mascot book. So we did that. And I got him toothbrush and toothpaste and got him ready for that and gave him a hug and a kiss. And we did our family hug. And, and then, you know, tonight I'll try to spend time with him tonight. But uh, we got to be good in the mornings and night as coaches. That's awesome. Kids. I love that. That's such a great lesson. Last question here, Coach, and this has been great with your time. Thank you so much. Share with us the the Bible verse or the story in the Bible or what the Lord's been impressing on your heart lately from his word that's really kind of just hitting you pretty much in the face, something that God's been doing in your life uh, recently from his word. Well, my life verse, you know, Butch Thompson, a good friend of mine, one time talked to me about a life verse and I'm like, well, what's a life verse? Right. So yeah, yeah. he went into talking about that. And, uh, so I'll, I'll but it's, it's Colossians three twenty three. whatever you do, do it heartily as to the Lord and not for men. Yeah. And I think, you know, obviously when you're in athletics, you we could have a tendency to try to please men and others, but it's just like to be reminded that that's not it. And then, you know, coach Madison asked us to memorize this Bible verse. I thought it was really good. It's James one, five. Mm. And um, and if you lack wisdom, let ask God who gives generously without reproach and it will be given to them. And um, obviously that's been a, a big one on my heart, too, with our team and our season right now. So those are the two Colossians 3.23 and James 4.5. He is Nick Mingione, a Kentucky baseball head coach and coach. It's been wonderful having you on the podcast. Hopefully we'll shake hands in person someday. And I just appreciate your time here on the show. Wish you nothing but the best. And, and we'll talk again soon. 
Thank you so much. Praise the Lord. Go Cats. Many thanks to Nick Mingione, the Kentucky baseball head coach, for joining us here on the Sports Spectrum podcast. Still blows me away that he's never been a head coach on any level coaching baseball. Any level until he gets to Kentucky. That's a pretty awesome story. And then not only that, but wins the 2017 SEC and National Coach of the Year and doing something that Kentucky's never done in making the NCAA Tournament Super Regionals a couple years ago. Great stuff from from Coach Mingione. Didn't you think so? I thought he was really, really good in explaining not only his faith, but just his his genuine sense of love for his players and wanting to serve them and wanting to uh, create great men, not just great players, even though obviously he wants to create great players or or help not create, but help uh, form great players, I guess, and nurture them and care for them. And I just thought his stuff was really good. So really appreciate Coach Mingione here on the podcast. You can follow him on Twitter at Coach underscore Mingione. It's M-I-N-G-I-O-N-E at Coach underscore Mingione. Give him a follow on Twitter and let him let him know that you heard his story here on the Sports Spectrum podcast. So we thank you for listening so much. We really do. You guys make this podcast what it is. Uh, we are on a record setting pace here in the month of April with listeners and downloads. And God is just doing some great things with Sports Spectrum. And we had over a million page views for our website, sportspectrum.com in the first three months. So the Lord is clearly opening up doors for the stories of sports and faith to be heard by the masses. And there's clearly an appetite for this. There really is. Uh, There's so many people out there who love Jesus and love sports, and there's really no place for them to get any kind of content that intersects into those worlds, except for us here at Sports Spectrum. So we're honored and we're privileged that the Lord has given us an opportunity to provide these stories to you. Uh, So thanks so much for listening and sharing and spreading the word about all we're doing here at Sports Spectrum. Check out our website, sportspectrum.com. That's where all of our content can be found. And certainly like us, subscribe, uh, follow us on Twitter, Instagram, and Facebook at sports underscore spectrum. And just appreciate all you've done as a listener here on the Sports Spectrum podcast. We'll see you next time with a brand new episode. Thanks so much for listening. This is Sports Spectrum. Have a great rest of your day.